Okay, hi there and welcome to a short video looking at some of the advantages and disadvantages of a country choosing to use a floating exchange rate. Floating exchange rate, of course, is when you leave the external value of the currency purely to market forces. There's no central bank intervention to try to manipulate or influence the value of the exchange rate. So what are some of the key advantages of a free floating exchange rate system. One key advantage is that it can help to partially adjust or correct uh, a current account deficit. So for example, if a country is running a large trade and or current account deficit, typically that brings the value of the exchange rate down because there's an excess supply of currency leaving the circular flow. A depreciation of the currency then leads to expenditure switching effects. Exports become cheaper, imports become more expensive. And of course, depending on the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports, depending on the Marshall learner condition uh, and the J-curve uh, working its way through, uh, that can improve the trade balance. So first point, a floating currency can help adjust persistent current account deficits. The second point is important. A free floating exchange rate can be a useful macro absorber when there has been an economic shock from outside the system. So uh, the Brexit vote in 2016 was a shock to confidence, a shock to the system. The Bank of England uh, cut interest rates a little bit, but actually the big change was the 15% pretty much immediate depreciation in sterling, which in a sense acted similar to a, to a cut in interest rates, had a similar effect of maybe a 1.5%, 2% cut in interest rates, hoping to absorb some of the shock effect. Likewise, a country like Poland uh, in 2009, in the crisis, as the global financial crisis really kicked in, Poland had a floating exchange rate, the Zloty. The Zloty fell 15, 20% and gave a little competitive boost to the Polish economy, uh, which helped them avoid a recession, actually. Uh, one of the few countries to avoid a recession, whereas countries such as Greece and Spain and Italy were locked into the single currency and they couldn't see their currency adjust. The third advantage is that if you have a free floating exchange rate, the central bank doesn't need to hold big foreign exchange reserves. They don't need to because they're not going to intervene in the markets. They don't have a currency target to try and reach. And capital can flow, flow freely across borders. So you can have the free flow of capital, which in that sense makes a country perhaps more attractive to foreign investment. Crucially, if you have a free floating exchange rate, monetary policy the base rate of interest, for example, or the scale of quantitative easing. Monetary policy can be used more directly for domestic macro objectives, controlling inflation or stimulating employment or perhaps avoiding recession, rather than monetary policy being anchored to a kind of exchange rate target. So there we have four key advantages of floating exchange rates. There are always drawbacks, negatives of uh, choosing the system. If you have a free floating exchange rate, you're taking away the option, in a sense, to use the currency to achieve a competitive depreciation or devaluation to improve competitiveness. Uh, the currency may or may not fall. I mean, you may want the currency to depreciate, but the market determines it. Whereas if you have a managed exchange rate or perhaps a semi-fixed system, you will be able to intervene. Free floating currencies might actually be quite volatile compared to a fixed or semi-fixed system, and a volatile currency could increase the risk factor for investment and uh, you know, it could inhibit trade. And another uh, other potential drawback is that if you have a floating system, that tends, because the price is moving more, that tends to invite more currency speculation. And oftentimes a currency can move in a particular direction, up or down, but some distance from the value perceived to be suitable um, and relevant for the domestic economy. The exchange rate could be too high, significantly too high, it could be too low for macroeconomic stability. Evaluation points. Uh, increasingly in the world economy, more countries are moving a little bit towards managed floating. They want some of the advantages of floating exchange rates, but equally they, they want their central bank on occasions to be able to intervene in the markets and perhaps influence the direction of a currency. Other countries favour actually locking their, their currencies into a semi-fixed system or a fixed rate against the dollar. Hong Kong, for example, fixed against the dollar, Saudi Arabia 
or the euro, Croatia, uh, Denmark has a fixed currency against the euro. For countries exposed to lots and lots of significant economic shocks, probably a floating currency is better than a fixed system. It gives you that flexibility. Uh, countries inside a fixed exchange rate system, in particular those countries inside a, a, a single currency block, have much less flexibility. It takes away one of those instruments of policy. So Greece, for example, couldn't devalue or depreciate because it had the euro. Uh, so Greece had to go through, a, well, in a sense was forced to go through a painful period of internal devaluation, including a period of deflation to restore some price and cost competitiveness. Had Greece had a floating exchange rate after the crisis, the, uh, the value of the drachma would undoubtedly have fallen quite substantially, causing some inflation initially, but perhaps stimulating the growth of exports and other industries uh, going forward. There we go, some of the advantages and disadvantages of floating exchange rates.